the indie author revolution has been around for more than a decade, but we indies continue to push the boundaries of what we're capable of, from getting over initial prejudices to staring down perfectionism and author imposter syndrome, we've become a force to reckon with. Now, after years of hustle and grind, we indies are rebelling again. Gone are the days of publishing a book a month until we drop, and in its place we're sowing the seeds of a better way. A way with more ease, abundance, and flow. Get ready to learn about indie authorship from a whole new perspective. We're about to cover everything from releasing your poverty mentality to manifesting your millionaire author destiny. I'm Carissa Andrews, and this is the Author Revolution Podcast. Well, hi there, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Author Revolution Podcast. This one is going to be an interesting, possibly polarizing episode. (laughs) So here's what I'm talking about. We're going to be talking about AI and how it's actually revolutionizing the way that authors are creating their works, right? So many of us, I think, first heard AI, like first heard about how like generative content creation AI has come about on the scene, like ChatGPT and all this stuff, probably through Joanna Penn. She's been talking about it for quite a long time. And now it's become more mainstream where people are starting to figure out like what this thing is. And some people are really kind of freaked out about it, right? It's a polarizing concept because so many people feel as though AI could be taking away their jobs. It's going to be really upending everything that we've been doing as authors or as creators. And while there is some truth to certain aspects of things, maybe the volume of work or the way things are going to work is going to shift, it doesn't necessarily mean like the end of everything or the end of creation, right? It it really just is here to help us and enhance what it is that we do so that we can become faster or more efficient with our creations. Because let's face it, not all of us are really great at certain aspects of the creation process. Sometimes things like character development or outlining doesn't come easy, right? It's a little bit more difficult or we're struggling with social media posts or whatever it is. And so things like ChatGPT have really helped authors or helped people in general to be able to put out or put together things that are really more beneficial or in a quicker time frame so that they're not wasting all of the time that they do want to spend on, let's say, writing their books, you're not spending all this extra time writing blog posts or writing social media stuff or whatever, or, you know, sitting in a stuck place where you're not quite sure where to go. ChatGPT, I've found, is such a wonderful tool to be able to brainstorm, to be able to figure out your next steps when you're feeling stuck or just not motivated or just ideate, right? And now ideation for me is high on my list of strengths. So I like to ideate, but having a tool like ChatGPT helps me to do it even faster because now I've got someone, it's like a critique partner, constantly at my beck and call where I can throw an idea out and I get some more ideas back, which spark more creativity in my brain. And then I can continue to move forward. It's been a fantastic tool to utilize. Now, one of the things that I do want to try out some more or at least start to play around with is PseudoWrite because that tool, from what I understand, can really help authors because it learns the way that you write. It can help you create stories even faster. Now, it's a tool I haven't used yet. It's a tool I plan on using, but I want you to start thinking about AI instead of like this big scary thing Use it as a tool. It's no different from using Buffer to schedule your social media posts. It's no different from using Scrivener to write instead of Word. Even Word is technically like a tool, right? You're not doing it on stone and using a, you know, I don't even know, chisel, I guess, to create your words. You're creating using a tool. And ChatGPT, AI, whether it be for generative AI content or whether it be for artistic generative content, it's all the same thing. This is a tool to help us plan our books, to write our books, to create our worlds, to live in this advanced society that we're living in. And I really truly believe that people who are not embracing AI and utilizing it in their businesses, and yes, being an author is a business, they're going to fall behind or they're going to struggle to keep up because there's a lot of stuff that's moving and it's moving very, very quickly. And if you're not willing to onboard a little bit of this content, a little bit of this AI revolution, 
it's going to become something that's going to hold you back. It's like back in the day when people were talking about Kindle and eBooks, like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the death of of reading. It's going to be the death of books. It's going to be the death of paperback books and bookstores. And now while the bookstore thing is a little bit like, okay, kind of there, everyone's still reading, right? People are still reading books. They're still reading paperback books. They're still listening to audiobooks. They're just different readers, right? Some of them are the same reader who just like all the books, like I am. I'm one of those weird people. But the point here is that AI is just a tool. It's revolutionizing what we're doing. Absolutely, 100%. It's going to shake things up. Things are not going to look the same as they did pre AI. It's just not because this is now the way that we're going to start integrating. This is the way we're trying to do all the things with all the hats that we're wearing and do them faster and do them better. That's not a bad thing. That's actually helping us to be better business people, right? And so when you look at it through that lens, when you look at AI through the lens of this is just a tool helping me to be better at what I'm already doing, that's going to help you level up. It's nothing to be afraid of, in my personal opinion. It's something to play around with. It's something to dig in and just kind of, you know, experiment with. See how it works for you. See what kind of ways you can utilize it. What aspects of AI do you enjoy? Now, you don't have to write your whole book with an AI bot, right? You don't have to use it to do that, but you can use it for some very, very strategic situations. Here's some of the ways that I've used ChatGPT in specific so far. I've used it to help me with my series planning. I've used it to help me with book planning, chapter synopsis. Like if I write my chapter and it ended up deviating from the chapter synopsis or the chapter by chapter synopsis I did with my outline, I will use the entire chapter and then tell it, hey, ChatGPT, give me a synopsis that's like five sentences long for this chapter. And it does it. And then I know what's happening in this chapter. And now if you are someone who doesn't ever do chapter by chapter synopsis, but you need it or you want it, now you've got it. And what's really interesting is that the more you do it, the more it learns that story. So if you're doing it all in that same chat, you're able to have more in-depth conversations with ChatGPT about the direction of this story, about things that you can do with it, about whether or not the characters are working properly. It's really fascinating the stuff that you can do in ChatGPT when you start utilizing it. You can do things like character development or asking it character questions like how would an Enneagram 9 act in this situation? And it'll give you some details. So if you're using things like Claire Taylor's Enneagrams for authors and you want to implement it better and you want to make sure that you're doing it appropriately, you can ask ChatGPT if it's working and it will answer you. It's super cool. You can do world building through ChatGPT, which is neat as well. Like you can, you know, throw out ideas about like magic systems and the way the way that different creatures react or ask how to create a werewolf system that's different or like what happens if there's a prophecy that does this? Like, how do you build a prophecy? Help me build a prophecy. Like all sorts of really cool ways you can throw things at ChatGPT and it helps you to come up with the answers. You don't have to take everything it gives you word for word because let's face it, that's kind of boring. And ChatGPT doesn't have the, at least the way that I've used it, doesn't have like your personality. You still have to incorporate that. You still have to put it in there. But it helps you with your basis. It helps you, it helps you with that ground level foundation of whatever it is that you're working on. I've used it for rough draft outlines. So as I give it a story idea and I'm trying to figure out my outline for it and I'm trying to work with, within the frame I already have for it. Like I have a skeletal outline. I usually come at it with a skeletal outline and say, help me to flesh this draft out a little bit more. Here's what I want. This is how I want it to look. This is the tone. This is the genre. And it helps me to draft the outline. It helps me revise outlines I've already worked on. So let's say I am halfway through. (laughs) This may or may not be an accurate thing. Let's say I'm halfway through a certain story. And just to see what it would come up with I've asked it, like, how would you create the rest of this story, ChatGPT? What would the story arc look like if it were, let's say, a rom-com? What would this outline look like? And what was really cool is the stuff that it came up with, there were elements of it that I incorporated because I was like, that's fantastic. That was wonderful. And I didn't think to incorporate that. 
but it knew my story because of all those chapter by chapter synopsises, right? It's super interesting. It can also help you with scene direction. If you're sitting at a scene and you're kind of stuck and you know something's missing, you can ask it, what is this scene missing? I feel like it needs to have more comedy. What could I do? And it will give you suggestions. I mean, who doesn't want that kind of interaction? Because, you know, ChatGPT is all about chatting, right? You're supposed to chat back and forth with this bot and help yourself understand, like, what it is you're trying to suss out. And it will give you feedback. It'll give you prompts to think about. It's super neat. So you could also do social media posts. Like I said, we waste a lot of time as authors. I know I definitely do. Where I'm trying to come up with social media ideas, I'm trying to do those sort of things. It's not my favoriteest thing in the entire world to do, but I know it needs to be done. And so sometimes if I'm in a time crunch or if I just am not feeling like creating a brand new content for social, I'll have it brainstorm with me so I can come up with ideas. Like I'll throw in ideas. This is the vibe. This is what I want to talk about. Help me come up with a social media post that's going to be inspiring. And then I'll take what it does and obviously put it in my own words because like I said, ChatGPT, and I'm using the free version of ChatGPT. I have not upgraded to ChatGPT 4. It gives you a really great foundation just to spring from. And sometimes that's all you need. I've even used it to create blog posts. And in some cases, like where the blog isn't necessarily something I'm like trying to do, it's not like an SEO laden thing. I'm not trying to use it as anything other than like I want to put a review up for a book that I've read. I will let it create the review. I'll tweak a couple of things based off of my own tone, but I will give it all the information first, like give it a five star rating. Here's what I liked about the book. These are the characters. This is the main thing I love the most and let it do its thing, right? And so all of these ways to create your content, to design your stories and your series and your worlds, it's getting easier. Do you see how it's getting easier, right? Sometimes we live in a vacuum. I know I do because as much as I love to pick my husband's brain (laughs) and he's really good at it, He's an ideation one. And so we, we do a lot of back and forth. We talk a lot about the series when we can, but he's working on his own things. And he's, when he's in construction mode, he's got like numbers and lengths and like widths and depths and things that are like floating around in his head. He is not in the ideation place <laughs> to help me with my story at my beck and call, right? But ChatGPT is, and it's been really, really fun to play around with it. Now, like I said, I want to start testing out PseudoWrite because from what I understand, it is a wonderful tool and one that can help you once it understands your particular tone. And so that's something to be thinking about as well. Are you going to go ChatGPT 4? Are you going to stay with ChatGPT 3 where it's free? Are you going to do something even more advanced where it's specifically designed for author like PseudoWrite? Whatever options you want, just play around with them and just experiment. If you want to experiment for free, just get ChatGPT, right? The basic, and just play around with how it works. Now, this isn't the only way that AI is helping authors. I've been also playing around with Midjourney, and I've been using it for book cover elements. Like I will talk about, you know, the the rom-com, and I'm trying to come up with elements to go on the book cover. I'm trying to figure out how will I place things. I'm a graphic designer, right? So I understand how this is impacting the graphic design community. But it also, if they're utilizing it, if they are gravitating towards things like Midjourney, they're able to create the elements for the book covers for quicker, for free, for without having to put all this work into it if they don't want to. Like if, if they get their joy from the creation phase, more power to them, uh, enjoy it. But they can also increase their speed. Now, here's the thing. I, it's so funny because my PA and friend, Jenny, she is AI opposed, like Anytime I bring up AI, she's like, "Mm, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. And here's the thing. She'll send me to these sites, right? Like Creative Fabrica. And she'll be like, I would get something more like this. Here's like a big package. It's not very expensive. It's got a whole bunch of elements that are fantasy based. And you know what? Every single one of those elements was created by AI. And I can tell by the way it looks. There are certain like things that you can just pick out because AI doesn't create perfect images all the time. Sometimes it creates images that are just a little bit off, right? They just have a, like a slightly different vibe or 
like uh, something is merged funny or like a person doesn't have a hand or their arm is twisted weird. Like you just can tell an AI created it and it wasn't fully developed properly. And (laughs) so she's sending me these sites and the elements that they're selling are AI generated. So be cautious when you think you're not using AI when you go to these sites, because you probably are. They are doing it. They're using things like Midjourney to create images quicker, to sell them to you faster and cheaper. And then you think you're getting something that was designed. So look, guys, why not just go to the source? Why not just create your own things with the thoughts in your head using your own prompts? That's what I'm getting at, right? So I've used it for those book cover elements. I've used it for character drawings to help me come up with ideas of what they look like or to use it in things like website images. I created wonderful website images. So if you go over to my new direct sales site, which is now live, guys, it's, it's live. The Shopify site, I used Midjourney to create the images for my characters and for this, the entire website, with the exception of like the book mockups. Those are done through all author. But you get what I'm saying. Like, Go over to carissaandrews.com and take a look around because those images were not drawn by me. Right? They were drawn by Midjourney and they were perfect because I specifically prompted it to do these types of things so that my characters, the way that I wanted it to look, came through. And it was my vision, the things that I had in my head. Now, I, I've used it for social media images. I've used it for Facebook ad images. And I will tell you what, those Facebook ad images kick some butt. They are doing phenomenally well. And there's no reason why you couldn't use these images to create, you know, engaging Facebook posts or engaging Facebook ads and get sales from it. It's super cool. I've used it for merch elements. So like Jenny was talking about chibi art and creating characters that look more like that and then creating stickers. So I've been doing that. I've been using Midjourney to create merch items that I will eventually sell. Now, the possibilities here, guys, are endless. Truly, it's endless. And it was so funny because I didn't want to go in and be like, oh, here's another, <laughs> another conversation about AI. But I think I am ignoring the obvious when I go, okay, this is author revolution, right? This is what we do. So AI is part of that revolution. AI is revolutionizing the way that we are creating, the way that we are designing, the way that we are being the authors that we are destined to be. And so I'm doing a disservice by saying, oh, let's let other people who are doing it more than I am. And who, who says people are doing it more than I am for crying out loud? I've been doing it quite a bit, as you can tell, right? So I've been playing around with it. I've been messing around with the, the types of prompts. I've been learning it on my own and understanding what works best for me and the way that the prompts work best. So it's been interesting just to get an ideal and a handle on it so that I can then eventually share that with you, right? So the first step here is this podcast episode where I've talked about it with other authors on the show. You've probably heard me and Troy, and I I don't even know how many authors I've talked about AI in this past year. It's been a lot. And not all of those conversations have even aired yet. So I just want you to be as excited about this concept as I am, because it is helping in so many ways. It's helping us to be faster. It's helping us to be more creative. It's helping us to get things done in a way that maybe we would put off for a while, you know, if we didn't have this type of help. Because let's face it, it's help. It's helping us to break through any kind of blocks. It's helping us to break through writer's block or some procrastination or, you know, whatever. It's a wonderful tool to help us to do more and be better. And I really want you to think about, like, are you embracing this the way that you could be? Are you thinking about AI as a tool? Or are you kind of like Jenny, where you're off in fear land? <laughs> are you feeling like this could be something that can help you? Now, I, if you, the answer is yes, if you feel like, yes, th- these things are going to be helping, I do want to say that I'm pulling this together for a new, a brand new course that's coming out in October for Preptober. So it was funny. True story. I'm sitting here, I'm going, okay, I want to revise the plan your series challenge. That was my thought process for for October. I wanted to upgrade it. I wanted to expand it out to five days because that was some information that I was getting before. And I just wasn't fully there. I wasn't fully committed to the process. 
And I was talking with Colin, actually, my husband, and we were talking about, you know, the AI revolution and how everything is coming together and how I don't want to just jump on trends because that's not who I am. I want to be able to give solid foundations and solid information to the authors who are following me and who are, you know, my students. And so I don't want to just jump on trends for the sake of jumping on trends. Like, I don't want to just teach AI for fun. And then, (laughs) I kid you not, it was like two days later, all of a sudden those two ideas merged, the plan your series challenge and AI, because I use it. I've been using it for series planning. I've been using it for book planning. And all of a sudden a new course was born. So this is not even going to be the same beast as the plan your series challenge. It's a completely different thing. Although it has similar vibes, like it's five days, it's not three days. We're going to talk about some of the same things, but it's being utilized in completely different ways. And I want to keep them separate because there are people who are just not going to latch on to this AI version, right? And so those people can stay and continue to go through the three-day plan your series challenge, which is all utilizing tools that are pretty standard in the industry, right? We're using things like Scapple and Scrivener and you know, doing that sort of thing. So they can use that. It's great. Continue on with it. It's wonderful. But if you're interested in utilizing AI and helping you to ideate and helping you to create the worlds in ways that maybe you wouldn't even think of on your own, this is definitely going to be the next level of planning your series, of planning your four books. Plus, it's going to be expanded. Like I said, it's going to be five days, six technically, when you realize that there's a like a pre-work day. Like I'm going to give you some mindset work the day before. Where with the plan your series challenge, day one was on mindset. And so we're going to talk mindset before the challenge starts. It's not even a challenge. Before the course starts, we're going to go ahead and we're going to launch a little bit of mindset work on that Sunday, the 1st of October. But the five days is going to go October 2nd through October 6th so that we can prep our books, we can get ready to go, so that we are playing around with this, getting used to the tools before NaNoWriMo, right? Because that's what we're all working towards, right? October, Preptober is our time. This is like the most creative and foundational moment in authors' lives for many of us. I know it was for me. And so I just can't wait. I can't wait to be able to launch it. I can't wait to be able to do it live. We are going to live launch the course, obviously. So it's going to be in person every day. We're going to have different Q&As that are going to be going on. I still have to schedule them. So I, I can't give you information on how many times we're going to have live Q&As. It's going to be more than once. That's all I know at the moment. So it's going to be wonderful. And I want you guys to be as excited about this as I am, to be thinking about, holy cow, all of these ways I can use AI to get my stories done faster. And yes, you could hypothetically use it to flesh out your chapters. Yes, you could hypothetically use it to write your books. Is it going to be as wonderful as if you were writing it? Probably not. So I personally don't do that. I use AI. I use ChatGPT to be able to outline. I use it to create a wireframe sometimes for the scenes, for the chapters that I'm working on. But I never use it to create my story. Because that's a, number one, it's a part that I love. Like, I love that world of sinking into it, of creating it and playing around with the characters and letting them do their thing. It would not be the same if I let AI do that for me. It doesn't mean you couldn't. Like, if there are aspects or parts of the scene that are really hard, or if, you know, you just want a little bit more to be filled in, you can do that. I think PseudoWrite does that. Where, like, if you take a scene and you're like, okay, I need this scene to be fleshed out more. Help me with that. From what I understand, it does do that. And so for those of you who struggle with fleshing out the scenes, I know a couple of friends of mine who are like that, where they write mostly novellas because they just boil things down to their essence. But sometimes you do need a little bit of that fleshed outness, right? You need a little bit more meat on the bones so that the readers really feel the true essence of the characters and what's happening to them. So Pseudo write might be the perfect thing for you if you're that type of writer. All I'm saying is, I want you to play around with these ideas, play around with the concepts that AI is a tool that we should be leaning into, playing around with, messing around with, experimenting with. At some point, there is going to probably be some rules, right? There's going to probably be some sort of law that's passed about, you know, AI creations and having to 
label how much of this was helped through AI, I'm not quite sure. I mean, if you're planning your books with AI, I don't think that your story is AI like created. You've created the story. You've just used a tool. It's no different from leaning on your friend and saying, help me create this, this series or help me create this story, right? So I don't know that that would necessarily be something you'd have to divulge because it's not the story itself. And I think that's how I view my own writing with it as well. Like I'm not allowing AI to create my story, but I am using it to create the frame for it, to help me get a good understanding of where I'm going. Because once you have a good understanding of where you're going, you can write so much faster. And I know many of you pantsers out there are like, oh, write faster. I get it because it, it help, like, takes away some of that spontaneity of the story. It takes away from, you know, from some of the creative connections that pull it all together. I get that. But you can still create a wireframe. You can still be hybrid when it comes to the story. You still, as a pantser, need to know where you're heading, right? Because if you don't, how do you know you did a good story? How do you know you satisfied the reader and created the, so- the story arc that you're trying to do? So you, there's always an element of story structure in your head. There's always this you know, innate understanding of how the story should flow regardless. And that's sometimes what ChatGPT or whatever can help you with. So at any rate, I hope this gives you some food for thought. I hope it excites you to be thinking about what you can do with your stories. I hope you'll consider joining me over at the new course. It's called Four Books, Five Days. And everything's going to be launching for that very soon. So it's four books, five days, mastering AI enhanced series planning, October 2nd through the 6th of this year. So 2023. And yeah, I hope you're going to join us. It's going to be an incredible course. I am already planning it out. I am developing the whole thing. I'm getting the branding together. (laughs) I'm doing all the work right now so that it's ready and we are going to have an absolute blast. So even though we're live launching it, I'll probably record the sessions beforehand. And then we'll just go into those Q&As throughout the week because I want you to be engaged with this. I want you to see how powerful ChatGPT or PseudoWrite is when it comes to helping you to create your stories. It's going to be an incredible course, guys. I cannot wait to share it with you. If you are interested in the transcript today, if you'd like to obviously get the link to be able to sign up for that, it's over at authorrevolution.org forward slash 195. Now, I will say that there's going to be a pre-launch pricing happening from now until the end of August. So August 31st is when the last day will be. It's going to be $27 to get signed up. Yes, just $27 because I want to launch it as a way to get people excited. So $27 until the end of the month. And then from September until we launch in October, it's going up to 47. So get in on it now if you're interested. I would love to see you join us. And that, if you want to go straight to it, it's authorrevolution.org forward slash four books, five days. And it's the number four, kind of like 20 books to 50K, four, the number four books, five, number five days. And so we'll just have a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time talking about AI, about creating our series, about writing our books and drafting our characters and our world building. There's so many things that are going into this. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys, <laughs> I think you can tell by my excitement that I'm having an absolute blast creating it. I'm having an absolute blast thinking about sharing it because it was, it was like a spark of, aha, this is what I'm meant to do. This is what I was supposed to be saying. This is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. It's that whole, you know, when you put your thoughts out there, you've made a decision, you know you want to do something, you know you want to inspire the audience. This is me talking, right? I want to inspire you. I want to keep you thinking about the direction of the author revolution, how it's shifting, how it's changing. How do I do that without feeling like I'm just hopping on trends? Because that's not me. I hate that. It just drives me bonkers. So if I'm not talking about a trend, from this point forward, you're going to understand why. I'm not a trend, like I don't hop on other people's trends. But if it looks like it's something that's sticking and it looks like something that's part of the revolution, I will absolutely 100% talk about it. And that's what this is, right? So from that manifestational point, right? So I've made that decision. I want to inspire you. I lock in the vibe knowing that it gets to come and I'll take the inspired action. Well, this was definitely the inspired action because it felt like that, like, aha, this is what I was meant to do. This is the thing, the next step, the thing I'm supposed to create. So. 
I'm excited about it. It was definitely my inspired action. And here I am. I'm creating it for you. And it's going to be incredible. All right. (laughs) I think you get it. At any rate, have a wonderful rest of your week. I'm going to continue creating my story for my rom-com pen name, which has been fun. I've been going back to that. My Shopify store is obviously up and running. I'm still adding certain little elements to it here and there. If you want to follow any of that, you can head over to my Patreon page for Author Revolution because I am sharing all of that with my $20 a month tier. So I'm sharing like the journey, what it's looking like, the things I'm incorporating, how I'm you know, changing and shifting that sort of thing. So that aspect is still going on as well. So if you're looking at direct sales and wanting to shift, another big thing for indie authors, I'm not going to lie. It's a game changer for us. So head over to my Patreon page and check that out as well. There's all sorts of ways we indie authors can take back our power, can create things better and faster and just have a lot of fun doing it. And that's what this is all about. Have fun with ChatGPT, have fun with PseudoWrite or MidJourney or, you know, creating a direct sales store, whatever it is that you're doing, you should be having fun. And I want that to be definitely relayed. That's something that I remember when I'm feeling anxious or mm, frustrated or whatever, I always default back to, is this fun? And if it's not, why am I not having fun? And if I can shift it, if I can get out of the funk, if I can create a different, better feeling thought, I will do that. And that is what I hope is going to happen for you as well, right? All right. Well, there you go. There we have it for this week. That's my chat on AI, the way that I've been using it, the way that it's been inspiring me, and I hope it inspires you as well. So again, if you want to get the transcript or get any of the other details, you can head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 195, and you can get everything is going to be in one place right there. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Do what you can, do what you do, get the words on the page, and go forth and start your author revolution.